Happy Monday everyone, this is Martha with Nature Niche and this week I want to talk to you about the concept of host plants and I thought it would be fun to take a quick little tour of some of the uh, caterpillars, I call it my caterpillar zoo that I have going on right now um, in the store. So it takes a very long time for insects to adapt to the specific chemical combinations that occur across our different plant species um, so we're talking a very long evolutionary time period, not a shorter ecological time period. And this concept is explained really well in the book, Bringing Nature Home uh, by Dr. Doug Tallamy. Goes into lots of, um, lots of detail. I'm just gonna be covering the, the basics today. But uh, phytophagous um, insects, uh, that's the fancy term for plant eating. Our plant eating insects feed on the tissues of living plants. And that includes insects in a majority of the insect orders, um, including Lepidoptera, which covers our um, butterflies and moths. So up to 90% of all of these plant eating insects are specialist feeders. Um, meaning that they've evolved with only a few plant lineages. So some only eat a single species of plant or others eat only plants in a single genus. So monarch eating a different species of milkweeds is a prime example of that. So these specialist feeders are adapted to find, eat, digest, and survive on um, plant lineages that produce certain types of phytochemicals. Restricted host plant associations require long periods of evolutionary time. Um, to get the most out of the plants that they eat, insects must develop the ability first to find their particular host plant or plants amid thousands of other plant species. They have to synchronize their life cycle with when uh, the plant parts will appear. So think the shoots, leaves, flowers, and fruits. They also have to develop the ability to overcome the physical defenses. Think thorns and stiff hairs, waxy cuticles on the leaves or stems, and the chemical defenses. So alkaloids um, and milkweeds, as an example, of their host plants with both behavioral and physiological adaptations. And this is why native species are so important to supporting our native wildlife. Um, ornamental or invasive non-natives just don't have or have very little shared evolutionary history with our native fauna. So here's an example of uh, mid-stage Spice bush swallowtail larvae uh, feeding on one of our native wetland shrubs, spice bush. They'll also feed on sassafras, but that's it. So, to find uh, their specific host plant, insects have to use cues uh, from a, an array of stimuli emanating from the plants that they encounter in the landscape. They have sensory receptors to perceive these stimuli. And those can include um, visual, mechanical, um, taste, and smell as far as plant characteristics go to recognize their host plants. So again, very common examples um, of, the, of specialist feeders include spicebush swallowtail on spicebush or sassafras and monarchs on milkweeds. So here's a monarch caterpillar on common milkweed and uh, specialist feeders take great risk uh, if they run out of a particular host plant and need to leave it to find another. And it's risky for um, the females laying eggs uh, to find a suitable host plant um, or lay eggs on an unsuitable host. So. Um, that's why we need biodiversity of our native plants um, in our landscape and have repetition of our native species across our landscapes, including our yards and places of business. 
So generalist insects, also known as polyphagous insects, have evolved to eat several plant types. And many um, produce powerful gut enzymes that help detoxify different classes of plant defensive chemicals, letting them feed and reproduce on lots of unrelated plant species. Um, this is especially true of moths. Um, and here's a great example with the giant leopard moth caterpillar, which is also known as the giant woolly bear. And they eat a wide array of woody plants and forbs, including cherry, oak, willow, dandelion, plantain, sunflowers, and violets. And here they are definitely going for the cherry first and then feeding on oak leaves. So my take home message for talking to you about host plants is that the more native plants we have in the landscape, uh, the more we can support both our specialist and our generalist insect feeders. Um, you can look for Lepidoptera in particular, our butterflies and moths. Check out the native plant finder website. You can type in your zip code and see kind of ordered by number of those species supported what are the best host plants if you have a small area to help you select um, those that'll, that'll support the most species. So typing in uh, Midland zip code uh, for us here in mid-Michigan, uh, the top three woody plants for supporting Lepidoptera include oak, then willow, and then uh, members in the genus Prunus. So our native um, cherries and plums. And for herbaceous plants, top rated um, are the goldenrods, followed by uh, wild strawberry and uh, sunflowers, members of the helianthus genus. So as you're picking out native plants, you can keep that in mind and think about all the wonderful species you're providing host plants for. Have a good week.